All right, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Joel Fernandez, uh, and uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, fixing real time throttling in the Linux kernel. So, uh, this is a problem we've had for a long time, and um, I, I've seen it so many times that I got sick of it this year, and I decided, okay, you know, this is what I'm going to do this year because I, I, have, I don't want to deal with it next year or the year after, hopefully. So, I'll, I'll, this is about our use case at Google and uh, why this is why this matters and and why fixing this is important. So real time is basically uh, you know real time scheduling. That's what I'm going to talk about. So all the information presented here is publicly available and there's nothing uh, confidential. Uh, Chrome OS and the Linux kernel are both open source projects, and so everything is you know all the code for both these projects are. Uh, you know, upstream and, uh, you know, available. So a little bit about me f uh, first. Um, so I work on Chrome, I work on Chrome OS currently. I previously have worked at, uh, worked on the Android uh, project. Uh, I also work, you know, work on the core Linux kernel um, subsystems like RCU, scheduling. I'm interested in uh, timers as well, IRQs, whatever the case might be, anything in the core of the kernel. That's kind of my focus area, locking, et cetera. Uh, I've been at Google for ab about uh, seven years now, and more about me is on my website. Uh, everything is available there, so feel free to check it out if you, if you wanna know more about me. All right, so we'll start with, uh, we'll start with a little bit of background on, on the Linux scheduling classes, just to set up the, the context a little better. So uh, we have this completely fair scheduler, which is, also called the sched other uh, scheduling class. Uh, it treats all processes equally, more or less, and allocates CPU time based on the process weight. Uh, from the man pages, sched other is a standard, you know, Linux uh, time sharing scheduler that is intended for all threads that do not require the special real time mechanisms. Okay, so it's it's kind of like you know it tries to treat uh, threads that are assigned uh, sched other fairly like but but it's also a little unfair in the sense that you can change the weights of the of the different uh, threads and change the amount of cpu time the the time slice uh, that that they are they are given uh, you also have sked batch which we'll not cover today it's similar to sked other but it's uh, it's like there are some slight differences but it doesn't matter for 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 this presentation and then we have uh, in in the real time uh, world we have uh, SCAD RR and SCAD FIFO, and processes scheduled uh, under one of the real-time policies, SCAD FIFO or SCAD other. They have the SCAD priority value, which goes from one to ninety-nine. This is also known as a static priority. And the important thing with this is that the task with the highest static priority will will get to will will preempt the lower priority ones. Uh, you know. For as long as as long as needed, um, the the difference between SCAD RR and SCAD FIFO is SCAD RR uh, within a within a specific static priority. Uh, SCAD RR, uh, you know, does a round robin between different threads, whereas SCAD FIFO is is first in first out. So it's going to not uh, you know even if there are other threads in the same priority level, it's not going to let let those run. And then we have SCAD deadline, which is higher priority than de uh, real time. And tasks don't have priorities. Instead, they have these timing properties that are assigned to them, like runtime, deadline, period. Um, and this policy is implemented using the earliest deadline first algorithm in conjunction with the CBS constant bandwidth server algorithm. So the idea here is the, uh, you know, uh, you uh, you want to run the task that has the earliest deadline first, but also you want to guarantee uh, a certain amount of runtime uh, within within a period for for different tasks. Like you're guaranteeing that they that these properties are are, are satisfied. That is done by the constant bandwidth server algorithm. So we won't go into too much detail for for those, but. But yeah, I just wanted to mention this. So in, in, uh, in summary, it looks like this. So you have CFS at, at the bottom, the, the CFS task, 
and then you have RT on top of that, the RT scheduling class. So when anything in RT is running, CFS will not get to run at all, period. Um, and then on top of this, you have deadline, uh, which, which has the same concept. When deadline is running, nothing in RT or CFS will, will ever get to run. Okay, um, so that's a little bit of background. And then let's, so now let's jump into our world in the, in the Chrome OS uh, uh, operating system. So Chrome OS, the operating system is largely based on Chrome. Everything is like a Chrome process, including the UI and uh, you know, all the UI elements, the, the, the menus and, and so forth. So this is a very, uh, um, it's, a, it's a very um, process heavy, multi-process architecture. Um, so, the way, so, this is, uh, so this also applies to how the Chrome browser works. You have uh, these different processes. You have browser process, which uh, is uh, responsible for you know, the, the window, the, the omni box, the, the menus and all that kind of stuff. And then you have the, uh, the individual tabs, you know, showing the, um, you know, the rendered HTML content and stuff. So each of those tabs are like separate processes. So that has, that's just the design of it because you have this process isolation between different tabs. Like you, you can't have them interfere, like when one crashes, the other ones won't and so forth. And then you have this third process called the, the VIS process or the GPU process, which, um, you know, the render processes and the browser process, they send frames to it and it puts it all together and uh, this shows it on the screen. So the, the GPU process or the VIS process that I just showed you, um, what it does is it, ex it, it accepts these compositor frames from the render processes and the browser process, and it uh, does this uh, thing called display compositing, which essentially is combining um, frames from multiple sources together and putting them together and aggregating them and showing them on the screen. Okay, so. The, the the main point here is there's a lot going on. There's a lot of processors, and the, the scheduler has a very important uh, role here in making sure that uh, the the system is performing uh, performing properly, and you know there's no problems. So uh, just to show you what happens in a, a you know uh, in a in an input event, uh, let's go through. The thread flow when when uh, when when you have a mouse down uh, event, so you have first you have the uh, the uh, the uh, hard IRQ and the IRQ threads that deal with the the input device, and uh, they uh, interact with the EV dev thread in the browser process. This is happening through the uh, input event uh, input event subsystem in the in the Linux kernel. EVDev is like uh, a framework for uh, for input events, and then this uh, go, uh, this wakes up the uh, main thread in the browser process, saying, "Hey, you know, there's an input event here to process." That goes and does IPC to the to the render process because this this whole thing is like clicking inside uh, inside a render. So the browser uh, knows that okay, this input event uh, is directed to this renderer. So it it goes sends IPC uh, to the to the render process, uh, and the IO thread is what handles that IPC. That then uh, passes the the event to the compositor thread, uh, and then that passes it to the main thread. So the reason this is two steps is because some input events can be directly handled by the compositor, like scrolling or Zooming, these things uh, don't require the render main thread to do anything because the, the layer is already uh, rastered and essentially the compositor thread can directly move it, uh, you know, for scrolling and so forth. So it saves the main thread, uh, you know, work and the main thread can do other things. But uh, in this case, it has to, it, it, it decided that it had to wake up the main thread um, and so it did that, and then it uh, then there's a response back to the compositor thread after the main thread handled the event, and then that goes back to the browser process. So you can see already there's so many threads, so, so much uh, you know 
uh, waking up, going on so many jumps just to handle a single input event. And then that goes back to the main thread. So th in, in this uh, um, flow, I haven't shown you the GPU process because there, is, there was no GPU process involved when I traced this down because there was nothing drawn on the screen. I was just clicking inside, a, inside an empty window and just you know, tracing everything and so forth. But you, you, you do have, if something was redrawn on the screen, you'll now have a GPU process uh, also. So you have even more uh, threads. And so essentially when you, when you click and say there's a redraw or something, if there's a scheduling delay in any of these wake-ups and if any of these threads don't get a chance to run, now that shows up as an input event delay, right? So, uh, so uh, you know, you're only as strong as your weakest link. So th this has to work uh, correctly. And so when I traced this down, uh, I looked at all the priorities of what Chrome was setting these threads to. And, and so it, the RQ thread is, was set to uh, RT uh, priority 49. And then all the other threads were CFS. Uh, yes, go ahead. Priority 50. You're looking at the kernel priority, how kernel was set. Okay. Space, you look at user space as priority 50. OK, OK. Yeah, I was, I, I was using ftrace. Yeah, no, have, have you heard of it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying that's the kernel view. But people, oh don't know what the kernel view is. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, 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 yeah. All right. Thanks. Okay, yeah. Priority 50 user space. Right. Right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so you have these wake-ups that happen, um, and, yeah, the, essentially all the... Uh, Chrome knows that these, these threads are high priority, so they were already set to like nice minus eight, which is like a very heavy weight, CFS weight given to these threads, right? And that does help, like the, the threads get more CPU time and so forth. It helps in, in some way. However, this is sort of broken, right? Because the, if the RQ thread is RT and the rest of the threads are CFS, that, then that, that kind of doesn't make sense because uh, you know, what was the point of the RQ thread being RT when, when the others were lower than, than RT? Uh, and on top of that, um, I found that the main thread was set to nice zero. So, uh, you know, again, I was, as I was saying, we're only as strong as our weakest link, right? So, um, th so that's a problem. So can we do better? Like, can we just set everything to RT already, right? Um, so we tried that, and uh, you know, we did this test. We have this 49-person uh, Google Meet test where you fire up uh, Google Meets, and you have these uh, fake, uh, you know, um, uh, fake uh, people in this in this test. Uh, and we tried this on a low-end Chromebook, and just setting everything to RT, uh, we set the, you know, whatever was nice minus eight, we ch changed it to RT plus eight, because we could just flip like, you know, the sign and, and just set it easily in the user space code. This is just for testing. So we set all threads that we, that were important, uh, you know, in that pipeline I showed you to, to RT. And, um, we measured the, uh, so we measured, in this test, we measured the mouse uh, latency, and it went down by 32% just by, by doing this. So uh, clearly, like, you know, the, this, there's, uh, there's a benefit of, of doing that. So, um, so the problem is uh, with using, using RT for everything is th th this guy, this main thread, uh, they, that, that main thread actually uh, can, can run JavaScript. That's where, like, the, the, the you know, that's, not, that's doing the main job of uh, doing the, the parsing of the HTML and uh, building the data structures and all this kind of stuff. So, it, uh, you know, and, and running JavaScript. So it can, it can really be busy. Um, so basically, as you can see, like, the, it's, uh, and the main thread is involved in the, in the you know, in the, in the input uh, pipeline, so it's 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 really important. So if if it gets busy, it can you know we can drop like input events, 
right? That main thread is, re is really important, uh, and it can run JavaScript. So, uh, so can we, uh, so the, the problem is like RT throttling. Like, so what happens is uh, if, uh, if, a, if a main thread takes too long to run, then we have a protection mechanism in the kernel called RT throttling, which can kick in and shut that thread uh, down. Uh, so can we make our RT more friendly for CPU-bound processes? So let me talk about RT throttling first of all. Uh, so the problem is RT tasks can starve CFS tasks. As I was showing you, we have this hierarchy, CFS, RT, deadline. Um, and several of these CFS tasks, they can be like important threads, like kernel threads. Uh, you know, uh, there's, there's many CFS threads on the system that we don't want to start with, the whole system will hang. And so RT throttling is this protection mechanism. By default, it uh, lets uh, RT tasks can consume 95% of, of, of CPU, but that last 5% is kept uh, around so that CFS can, can still run. And here graphically, I'm showing it, um, you know, you have real-time running 95% of time and, and a little bit is left for, for CFS. So what is the problem with this whole mechanism? If we want to reduce the RT runtime, so if we reduce that 95%, say we, we make it like 70% or something, then uh, the CPU is idle while we're waiting for RT tasks. So we're, we're essentially throwing away CPU cycles if we, draw, if we reduce the runtime too much. And if we increase the runtime too much, we're starving CFS tasks, right? Like maybe those CFS tasks need to run. So this mechanism doesn't really work very well. And there are many more issues with this mechanism, uh, which we won't go over in this talk, but uh, you're welcome to re reach out later. Uh, I had a previous talk where I, I, you know, I went in great detail on the, on the problem. So I, I, you know, it's, it was an OSPM conference, so you're welcome to review those slides. But this mechanism is horrible and it's really broken. The result I've seen over the years is this is typically how a performance engineer, um, uh, you know, ends up uh, ends up working working through these problems. So first he encounters a performance problem, and then he starts setting things to RT, and then everything works well and great and you know, uh, the products shift and, and, they, and they go home and everything. And then there's a bug report due to <laughs> throttling in the field. I've seen this over and over and over. And, and then people revert everything back to CFS and then repeat. <laughs> so I've, I've seen this over and over again. And uh, that's kind of what made me sick and tired of it. And, and that's why I started looking at it this year uh, to, to do something about it. Yeah, so. so the old RT throttling design is, so the way RT throttling works is um, you have this RT run queue that's a part of this general run queue, and the, the RT run queue is removed from the, from the main run queue. You can have a hierarchy of RT run queues because you can have C groups, or you can have run queues within run queues. So the way the, the thing works is as soon as scheduler detects that, you know, okay, you know, time has too much, RT is running for too long. It takes that RT run queue off of the hierarchy. And that happens in this piece of code in RT.C, where you can see that it'll do a scat RT DQ. So we cannot pick them. They're, so this is the pick loop in RT.C, and where it tries to pick like an RT task that's runnable. And it cannot pick them, we cannot pick them. That's how throttling works, right? It's trying to pick, but it's gone because the throttling took it out as I showed you in the previous slide. So the, for the throttling duration, there's a timer that is set up. Timer goes off and says, okay, uh, we've punished RT enough, now let's put it back into the run queue. So for the, until then, the pick loop and RT cannot pick because there's nothing to pick. So my first attempt was I want to run RT tasks, but when the CPU is idle, the problem is even when the CPU is idle, the, because the RT, ta RT run queue was removed from the hierarchy, it, there's nothing to pick, right? So the CPU is left idle. So that's one thing I wanted to fix was I want to run these tasks when CPU is idle. 
in Chrome, uh, in Chromebooks, we first of all have fewer CPUs than, than, than like say servers, right? So it's ridiculous if we leave the CPU idle. Um, so my, my idea was, okay, I wanna keep them on the run queue, but not run them if, ne if, if possible. But I still want the option to run them. And I still wanna maintain the fact that throttling has happened Right, I, I want so I all that accounting for throttling. I, I I maintain that, so I left the RT time and the timer that I mentioned. All of that is left intact. But the modif the modification I made was when um, it, the when the runtime is exceeded, we do not remove it from the the hierarchy. And also another modification was when the timer goes off, we don't have to put it back on, uh, we don't have to enqueue it back either because we never took it off in the first place, right? And then, I'm, then we modified the pick loop to pick the throttled uh, tasks if, if the CPU was, if CPUs are idle. That was the first thing we wanted to do. The next thing we wanted to do was um, not only when the CPU is idle, but even when CFS is running, we can timeshare RT and CFS. Uh, and that's not ideal, but at least it would, it would kind of make RT run like CFS once the throttling kicked in, right? So it's kind of like we're demoting RT to CFS if it was abusing the CPU, you see? So that, that's, we actually got that working as well. Um, and there were like, I'm just mentioning the, the, the simple stuff. There were like several corner cases. We broke stuff all over the place and we fixed stuff. Uh, one of the interesting ones was obviously because uh, when the timer goes off and we don't put stuff back onto the run queue, we don't do an end queue back, we have no opportunity to enter the, uh, enter the scheduling loop because end queue was already doing that. So we had to manually, when we unthrottle something, we had to manually trigger reschedule uh, or it, was, it wasn't working. And then the, and, and I, we actually ended up simplifying code. Um, one of the corner cases was because we don't take, uh, on throttling, we don't take the stuff off of the queue. We don't have to worry about cases where uh, when an NQ happens, what, was the task throttled or not, stuff like that. Um, in fact, we shouldn't worry, otherwise this whole mechanism will fall apart. And we ended up deleting code and that went away as well. Many other cases uh, we'll not cover here. Unfortunately, this could not be upstreamed. Uh, we went to Italy and talked about it, and uh, it's a long story. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so let me go over why not, right? So the upstream community does not want R RT throttling fixes. That's what I took away. Uh, they want us to instead handle uh, starvation of CFS tasks by boosting them to to SCAD deadline. Um, good news is that it might just work and it's lower complexity. And then once we get that working, we can just delete RT throttling completely. Uh, and we already have, people have written patches over the years, uh, but it needs more work and we're looking at it. So, um, so how much time do you, we have a lot of time. So, so now I'll go with that mechanism uh, and uh, how that can address uh, RT throttling. So these patches were developed by Peter Zilstra and, and improved by, by Yuri. They're members of our scheduler community. Uh, just to go over the hierarchy of uh, you know, scheduling, this is you have sched other, sched RR, or FIFO, and then sched deadline. That's the hierarchy. And the main idea with these patches was to guarantee a, a deadline reservation for the, the CFS tasks. Um, basically, we, what we will, would, would like to do is guarantee that CFS gets a runtime R every period P. Uh, in other words, it's, get, it's guaranteed to get a, a certain percentage of the CPU so even if RT, um, you know, took up a lot of bandwidth, 
uh, we we still have we we are not starving the the, the CFS tasks. Um, so it consists of uh, this fake scared deadline task, uh, which is added to the struct RQ. Uh, uh, it's called uh, a fair server because essentially what it is is it's a deadline server. It's not a real deadline task. It's just a container for CFS, and that container is is deadline. Um, let's see. And uh, this fake deadline task is given one clock tick every 20 clock ticks, so like 5%, but this should really be configurable, so we should change that so that we're able to tune that. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I'll go over s some of the concepts in these patches. So one thing is uh, to make this work, we, uh, these patches have to modify the CFS wake up path. So the first CFS task that wakes up has to start the deadline server. So essentially it's starting this fake deadline task. It basically is wakes it up. Um, yes, uh, the question is, will this not uh, introduce delays um, let's see. Um, it's only done on the first task that wakes up. Um, and uh, in the NQ path, we do hold the run queue lock already. So it's already, you know, we're, we're already holding that. So in my opinion, it shouldn't, it shouldn't matter. But yeah, we, we have to test it. We're still working on that. Okay, the other question is, um, how many, if you have like five CFS tasks, you invoke this deadline server condition, how many do you run? Because every time you are scheduling CFS tasks, that means if a RT task is ready to run, when would that become a priority? Do you just say, you're running this CFS task one, um, so I'll, I'll idle, and then you're doing running that, and you complete that, and go back to your regular queue. No, is so is it one or two or three or? Four? <laughs> I guess that's. That's a good question. I, I guess the question might be: Is if it's a deadline task, that means it's earliest deadline first. Where the old throttling is, it doesn't kick in until we hit the max. So the question is: This now has to be the five percent at the end, but by the deadline yeah. server, it's going to be the five percent at the beginning. Yeah. So we, uh, the sixth patch okay. modifies. So that is exactly a valid problem, and that is addressed as well. So with the thing with deadline is to, uh, it's all about guaranteeing bandwidth, right? So we, we don't really need to run it until we really need to run it. So that, that's handled as well. But you're absolutely right, because otherwise you can have RT getting interrupted quite a lot and stuff. So I, I believe I cover that as well in the slides. Okay, so the first thing that wakes up, we wake up the deadline uh, uh, server, the fake deadline task. And then in the sleep path as well, we have to stop the deadline server at some point. So we do that when the last CFS task uh, you know, is not runnable anymore. Uh, and we uh, also need uh, some extra functions that Deadline can uh, ask CFS, hey, you know, do you have anything to run? Um, and also another function for asking CFS, hey, uh, I'm running now. Can you pick something for me? <laughs> so there are these uh, functions that have to be provided to, to get deadline by CFS. Uh, and yeah, and so this is the deadline pick loop. So deadline, when it's picking deadline tasks, it checks if, okay, this deadline entity that I'm picking now, is that the fake deadline task? If it is, it then calls that CFS function I just showed you to do the, the pick. Um, and then uh, to uh, Shua's uh, question, Yuri made further changes to not start the DL server until later. 
uh, because all we have to do is guarantee that CFS gets to run, not run it immediately. Uh, and the code for that looks something like this. So he basically starts this thing called the watchdog, and that delays the starting of the, of the server. And it was exactly for that problem. Oh, a second. Oh, so my question, which might be yours, too. <laughs> um, so the question now is, uh, how does this start? So when RT is not running, we want it running, right? RT is not running. So I mean, if or does this? Okay, so this runs whenever CFS is running, regardless if something's in RT is running or not. Correct? Or is this yeah, yeah, yeah. This the, yeah, yeah. So, so this. So the question is. Um, so if RT is not well, running, if RT is not running, then CFS will it'll fall back to CFS. So this, oh, stuff, this is so this so this is only if RT, RT tasks are queued on the same CPU. Uh, you raise a good point. So this, I mean, that it probably does. I, I bet you it does because it doesn't make sense to have this if RT is not running. You just don't want because you, you don't want this overhead. You don't want things. So basically, there is probably a statement is because it's probably when it's in queued, but because you know it's going to be in queued, RT is running. But you can queue it, uh, so it doesn't get to run. But you say, "Hey, it can't run because RT is running. Let's start the uh, deadline server for it." That's. I think it has to be that way. But, Wait. So okay, can you walk me through the exact? So okay. Uh, so basically, this. The point I'm saying is, if RT is not running, we want CF to run without yeah. this involved. So. So this. Will, so the timer will start, and there's no deadline until this goes off, right? Until the watchdog goes off. No, like, but the thing I'm saying is, this shouldn't even be executed if there's no RT running. But so, you don't know if RT will suddenly start running. And if there's, I'm wondering if a pet we should if RT starts running and if then it needs to yeah. trigger the uh, uh, CFS. We could thing. do that. Yeah, I think this came up in one of the discussions as well. Like, can we can we actually start the watchdog itself until we really need it? Right. Uh, so yeah, I think that's a that's a good point because you might have a situation where there's no RT running at all for a long time, mm -hmm. and then why are we doing this, right? Exactly. Was that, was that kind of like what you asked, or you had something else? So uh, just to clarify, uh, I started looking at this, these new patches a week ago, so I'm still catching up as well. That, that's, that's perfectly but, fine, yes. But yeah, I'm happy to discuss. <laughs> so uh, one question I have is, so when does the fake, once a fake DL process task gets on the queue, does it go up? Is take, does it get taken off? And when will that get taken off? Does it all stay on there forever? Uh, so, okay, so uh, I think I covered that. It's, it's here. It's taken off when the last CFS task goes to sleep. The DL server stop will take it off. Because we don't need the DL server anymore. Okay, so, so if uh, you have like four CFS tasks that got put on this DL queue. Uh -huh. So when the last one goes off, yeah, goes to sleep. So what happens the first one? I mean, if it needs to be scheduled. The, oh. will, it'll never get scheduled. It'll, it'll get a, say you have four tasks on there. Yeah. So until so. the last one goes off, you're running them. Yeah, the and four are, you have. Once so the, the NR, four are done. Yeah, the NR running is going to be four, mm -hmm. right? So it'll never uh, stop. It'll go from four to three, three to one. Finally, when zero will stop it. Okay. So, yeah. you, But you still have the one in there. And then when you hit the, no, you can't, right? You, it goes, well, uh, yes, right. So it, the, it's no longer, as soon as it finishes its time slice, uh, that fake process drops, a uh, fake task do drops off the list. Yeah, so there, there's two, th yeah, the time slice is a different concept, and then you have runnable versus sleeping. Mm -hmm. So the time slice is when like the time is shared when all of them are runnable. Uh, maybe I just want to make uh, one confusing. When running just means that something wants to run, it doesn't mean it's actually running. So you know, it's, it's getting, it's not that it has its time slice or not. So sometimes that's, sometimes that's confusing for people sometimes, the fact that running, ha we have several terms for running. There's one that's actually you're on the CPU or something like that, or you're actually just, I just want to run. This is, I just want to run. So this means like everyone else has just said, okay, I'm done running, or I've exited, or I'm in a sleep, yeah. or, but yeah. 
Yeah, and I think uh, my, uh, other paths are like migration, like if, if something runnable is moved to another CPU, then this will trigger as well. So that in that case, also the, the server will stop. And, and I'm 100% sure this mechanism, like from my experience working on scheduling features, this is gonna have problems somewhere that we don't know about yet. Um, even after we're 100% we're sure that there are no problems. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Yeah, so, yeah, so actually that's all I really had. Uh, this is the code that does the, instead of starting the server, we start it until we really need it. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, so stay tuned. We'll use this, improve these patches, and report back later. Hopefully uh, next year we're talking about a different issue and not, this, not the same issue, or we're talking about the same issue, but we've, we've solved it. We'll see how that goes. At least like the scheduler community is on board with this idea, this way of solving it. So that's why I'm uh, positive as well that we can get it, get this done quickly because we have uh, really good people on board and, uh, who, are, who are working on this stuff with us. So, so thanks and yeah, we can open it up for any other questions as well. So the 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 uh, workload you showed the workload with the multiple threads that's yes. a combined workload. So one of the things that is um, r poor planning on the workload part part is looking for dependencies. Yes, you do need to solve the problem of RT throttling and DL. But the other problem I see in this picture is that the workload analysis, when you do look at the workload and flow and see who is impeding whom, then you would have, if a workload analysis is done, you would have up the priority of the main thread, don't you? I mean, you would have recognized that in the path. Yeah, so the thing is, we, uh, we could set the main thread priority to, uh, to what they were for the others, but that won't really uh, help, uh, that won't really solve the whole problem. Like, yeah, that, that's one part of it. Yeah, that won't solve the whole problem, but yeah. I'm saying that's also a problem when you look at the workload. Yeah. So um, it's sort of out of scope of what Joel's talked about right now, but one other little thing that, we've, that Joel and I have actually talked about before is uh, having some way of doing a wake up priority inheritance. So you basically, like we've said this, like yeah. for things like call chains that you know, we could keep main thread at a low priority until like the compositor thread at a higher priority says, wake up, I'm, and then it will like boost it. And we have, like, so what we have to figure out a mechanism on how to do that. But that's how you do the call chain like this, where we don't want main thread always running at a high priority unless I need it to. On it's on, yes, on demand, um, basically priority boosting. But that's a separate, that's gonna be another talk. Yeah. Anyone else? All right. Cool. All right. Thank you.